to Scion Noir. Hi. Hey ho. What up? Hey. Peep peep. There's they're still drawing all over the hand room. Most fun. Are you Zen? Yep. Are you sure? Done. There we go. Thank you. They are drew a fish. Congrats. Yay. Okay, this... so today we, we have someone new joining. I am Matthias. Why is he Russian? Scandinavian. <laughs> Close enough. So, do do we want to do the the intro scene for him? Then? Yeah, here is what I'm gonna do. I am going to have you describe what a normal day for Matthias Tierson would be. All right. So, in the morning, Matthias Tierson wakes up in his grubby Chicago apartment. Um, splashes some water on his face, takes a shower. Gets dressed in a nice business suit. Um, walks a couple blocks down the street. Uh, you know, goes to a uh, nice little, you know, cafe, cafe on the corner. Uh, gets kind of a, a some toast in the morning. Walks a few more blocks down to, towards the docks or wherever. Uh, meets up with his gang of uh, mafia enforcers which he has been placed in charge of. They all, you know, say hi, um, talk to the, you know, soda capo of, uh, their little area there, um, figure out who they're gonna rough up today. Generally rough up some places, grab some money from local businesses. You know, honest work. Sure, honest, let's go with that. He's a legitimate businessman. Well, when you return to your apartment, there is a tan, sleek-looking man in your apartment, and he's just kind of waiting for you. Matthias pauses, stares at him, cracks his knuckles in his neck, and says, You seem to be in the wrong apartment. Yeah, I'm in the right one, trust me. Well, then that means you're looking for me. Indeed I am. I don't have a lot of time, so let me just get this out of the way. My name's Hermes, and you're the son of Tyr, the Norse god. Yes, that is my name, Tirson, thank you. Yes, exactly. Yes, we know you can read a phone book. I need you to do something for me. I don't often work for people who break into my apartment, but tell me, go ahead. For the record, the door was still locked. There doesn't seem to be any, you know, um, what's the word? Signs of your apartment being broken into. Yeah, he's highly suspicious of this. Well, in case you haven't gathered, you're what we call a scion, a children of the god. Is that so? Mm-hmm. And I have a bit of a mission for you. Currently, your father and a lot of other people's parents are missing. So? Hermes just kind of stares at you. Listen, you'll be able to rough up a lot of things. All right. And you'll have a bit of help, too. Hermes reaches into his pocket and pulls out a knuckle duster. <whistles> this was given to you by your father. Or, well, I suppose left for me to give you, concerning the circumstances. Okay. He, he like, takes it and tries it on. And when you put on, you feel like something has been bestowed upon you. Ooh, good grip. And then he snaps his fingers, and five uh, mafia enforcers are appear in the apartment with you. Whoa! Benny, how did you get in here? These five were entrusted to you by your father. Oh, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you guys know about this for like all this time, or...? They did. Oh, well that's kind of cool. Since you are kind of alone right now, I already have a band fit for you. Oh, more buddies? Mm-hmm. And there are many, many pets. It'll be great. I'm sure you'll get along fine. Whoa, whoa, whoa no, no, this apartment has no pets. Uh, Hermes touches your forehead. Uh... And you now know how to use your boons. 
Alright, Hermes gives you an address to the Allerton Hotel. They should be arriving there soon enough. I just would need you to rendezvous with them. This I can do. Alright, ta-ta! And in a blink of an eye, he's gone. Alright, boys, we gotta get out of here. There's no house party tonight. We got work to do. Now we are switching back to, uh, the other guys. The ones who currently aren't in Chicago. So how are y'all getting to Chicago? Train? Yeah, train. Mm-hmm. She was trying to figure out a way to sneak out of the house. Also train, but first uh, he has to help Shu out of her house. Oh god, I'm scared. So Joseph had the whole night to think about this. And he came up with the perfect plan. What was it? So he goes shopping in the morning, leaves a note at his university that he'll be gone for a couple days, maybe longer. And... When... He buys some new clothing. I know what you're doing. He also has a scarf to hide his beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shoot this, you know, sees him coming toward the house, just says, flex it. Jumps out the window from her room with her backpack. <laughs> with with her uniform still on. And she just kind of drags him away from the house. <laughs> <laughs> what? I had to... Didn't you say I should help you get to Chicago? I'd rather not be grounded for the rest of my goddamn <laughs> life! Thank you very much! Have you seen what an actor I am? You look like a clown! From clown school! She kind of stares at him, throws up her arms, and just walks down the street, pretending she does not know him at all. So Joseph goes in the next week corner and changes the back to his regular clothes. And force the others away. Zen, how are you making it? Can I ride my tiger? <laughs> that would take a while. Yeah, Chicago is far away. Bring it here's fast. Chicago, it's far away. <laughs> Can he jump on top of the train with the tiger and then just ride on the top of the train on top of the tiger? I like that idea. Can I do that? What are you going to do if you have a tunnel? Oh, he can go shadow. It's fine. He'll just limbo under it. I mean, it costs Shadow Meter, but I can do it. Also, she probably sneaks onto the train and then switches out from a uniform to what she usually wears. Alexis doesn't have any money whatsoever, so if one of you guys has to buy her a ticket or if she's just riding in a boxcar. You could hitchhike. She's totally fine with buying a boxcar. I will be, mm, pay for the little girl. Find somebody else. Thanks. Look, my little girl! <laughs> oh, I thought you meant me. He pets Shu said, sure you're not. She punches him in the gut. <laughs> okay, roll me, uh, your dexterity plus your unarmed light. Let's see, unarmed light. Oh, right, plus brawl, yeah. Yeah, so roll dexterity plus brawl plus accuracy. You hit exactly. You can roll your damage. <laughs> okay, roll your strength plus your weapon damage. <laughs> Alright, one, two, three, four. Oh, how cute. One day you'll be the star of all the Irish pop, eating people up left and right. You're a dead man. <laughs> sure. Alexis runs up from behind them and shouts party. <laughs> and puts her arms around both of them. Lewis buys uh, tickets. Enough to cover tickets for people who don't already have tickets. Uh, but he makes very certain to buy them business class tickets and buy himself a first class ticket. <laughs> wow. He, he likes his privacy. Besides, he's got a new car owner's manual he needs to study on the way over. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. I mean, at least it's not coach. You all buy tickets and catch a local train. It's not a high class thing, but it gets the job done. Everything goes about normal until a young tan skinned woman decides to take a seat next to one of you. She should text to me, because it'll probably be funny. She's dressed far more formally than just a normal train ride would suggest. If you had to guess, you'd say she's almost dressed for attending her old man's funeral. Alexis looks over at her and says, hey. Hello. She is drunker than she was uh, yesterday. That's an accomplishment. <laughs> I think this actually deserves penalties then. Yeah. So this is a 
bit of a ragtag group of birds here. Mind if I ask the occasion? Just visiting some friends. Field trip. Huh. Well, my business is a bit private, so let's just say I'm going to Chicago for a meeting. She fills with the necklace she's wearing for a bit. It's a very fancy bit of jeweling with a dazzling gemstone attached to it. Mm. I can't hear you on top of the train! So Joseph looks at the necklace? That looks really expensive. Oh, trust me, it is. It was given to me by my father. Your father must be a, a well-off man, then. She just kind of smirks and says, Yeah, you can say that. Well... What? What? What was that noise at? I don't know. She, Alexis is currently drinking still. In the train, what drinking is probably not allowed. Our general. It's in a, it's in a, it's, she's drinking from a flask. I don't think that makes it better, like... Yeah, fuck it, we're crossing state lines, there's no FBI yet, <laughs> what? It's the 1920s-ish. 1929. It is, drinking is in fact illegal, but she doesn't care. We're not in the streets, nobody cares. It's okay. I, I, like, I assume there's just... I doubt anybody really notices. The woman does. I mean, I'm sure she does, but what do I care about what she thinks? Joseph pretends he doesn't know her. So what's her name? My name's Risa. Pretty. Thank you, I think. Alexis then falls asleep. Uh, I look at Alexis' uh, assert health. Is she still alive? She's still alive. She's she's fine. She's super drunk, but she's fine. I I steal her hat. <laughs> no, my hat. <laughs> she kind of fiddles around with her hat and then puts it like on. Out now, it's Brigadier going meow meow inside. On top of the train. No, no, I agree. <laughs> she lightly puts the she lightly puts the hat back on Alexis, and then goes back staring out the train. It's at this point, though, she looks at uh, Esmeralda. Uh, there. I was gonna say that Esmeralda was probably also looking out the window, so she probably doesn't notice. Tell me, we seem to be from the same heritage. I'm curious if you would know more about this particular jewel than I would. Uh, okay. I, I look at the jewel. Do I... Does anything immediately stick out to me? She hands you the necklace. Okay. Do you take it? Sure, yeah. Roll me willpower plus integrity plus legend. <laughs> this isn't suspicious. Not at all. Willpower plus integrity plus legend. That sounds an awful lot like things you need to resist a power that I can do. Alright, so, you look at the necklace, it's a very beautiful ruby. Oh, if you've really seen gems before like this, but, or not like this, but if you've seen gems in your line of work, but if you had, this would be incomparable to anything I've ever seen. I mean, I'm sure somebody's died wearing a necklace. <laughs> they sure, uh, she took it and hmm, sold it later, book for book. I think that's illegal. If nobody knows, it can't be illegal. Can't go around disturbing the dead like that. Uh, uh, yeah. Aside from the gem being astounding, you really don't notice anything different or unusual about the necklace. Alright, I hand it back to her saying, eh, I don't know anything about it. Looks pretty, though. Uh, well, that's a shame, but... Well, it's been enjoyable talking with you, but I have some matters to attend to. And with that, she leaves the seat and moves to where she previously was. Hmm. Okay, see you later. I'm gonna go for a walk. She says, and then tries to unseen follow the woman. Doesn't trust this whole, whole thing. He hears okay. you in the background saying, don't fall over, old man. Try not to fall asleep, little girl. You are dead! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about her falling asleep. Alexis snores. But yeah, Joseph tries to follow her without her noticing. Okay, um... Call me Dexterity Stealth. He's gonna make that a little... He's gonna use one willpower to 
take intellect on this role. Okay. Since he, his mind tells him this woman is up to something, he should find out what. Alright, yeah, you follow her without her noticing. She goes back to her original seat and is looking at some papers from her briefcase. Do I notice anything off? No, not really. Hmm. Can I see what paper she is reading? Um, roll me... I'm not sure if I should make you roll just a standard perception awareness or like a perception stealth. I mean, if I'm already on detect, that I probably just need... Yeah, that's true. Alright, perception awareness. <laughs> oh, okay. No, you, you really can't get a good look at the paper. Looks like one of these Republican papers. <laughs> no wonder I had a bad feeling about her. <laughs> oh, with that, he goes back to his seat. Hey, Republican papers. You heard him. Back in the times when Republicans weren't the Republicans they are today. You heard him. Alright. Alright, so is there anything else any of you would want to do on the train? Oh, I think I know. Oh no. Well, I have to get into the train somehow. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have regular cats go meow meow, dive bomb me through the top of the train, and attack me in front of a bunch of people as I scream, Oh god, a tiger's attacking me! And then as I snap its neck, it fades into shadows, and it's fine. It's all cool. I'm on the train now. Brigadier's fine, he's a shadow. Dude, yeah, doesn't notice this. Successful. Alexis doesn't, he's asleep. She probably already love to go get a hamburger in the snack car. Did hamburgers exist in the twenties? Yes! Yeah! <laughs> hamburgers are a thing! <laughs> it always existed! The first hamburger didn't come around until the 1960s. What's marinara sauce? What's in Italy? Meanwhile, he did this in the first class car. Lewis looks up from his hamburger and uh, car owner's manual slash uh, anatomy textbook that he is looking at side by side comparing. Uh, and then just kind of looks at, uh, at Antonio, goes, nice trick, and then continues eating his burger. I, I just Google when were hamburgers existed. Uh, they existed in the 20s. When were hamburgers existed? I. <laughs> When were, existed. when were hamburgers existed? <laughs> anyway. Alright, so you all arrive successfully in Chicago. Well, I'm sure some of you haven't been here. It's a place you want to tread lightly. It's the stomping ground of Al Capone. Make one wrong move and you're in danger of getting bumped off. Louis, uh, Joseph puts on his old military armor and puts his trench coat on top of it. It looks really weird. Alex is getting off the train, is wobbly and still very drunk. And as she waits for other people to get off, she, I don't know, just wanders off somewhere. You're going on adventure. Yay! Adventure! <laughs> <laughs> I like to think she said that as she was walking down the street. <laughs> Oh, Alexis is probably going to get in so much trouble. Oh, are we getting off the train now? Yes. Alright, so Antonio gets off the train and then looks at himself and realizes he's wearing a shirt. Oh, that's what was wrong. He flexes and rips his shirt in <laughs> half. There we go. She would just kind of rest the bow staff on her shoulders and just looks around. Obviously, stay close with the group. Alright, so what do y'all want to do? In Chicago now, new city. Let's eat. I don't know, Alexis is no longer with the main group. We'll catch up with them later. Well, we <laughs> know this uh, Cheng Liu kid is the son of Shen Liu, who's apparently a boss here somewhere, right? Oh, right. He was a boss in... He was the boss of a New York crime Yeah, kid. Yeah, but it's probably well known then. Like, all mafia bosses know each other. Just... I don't think Should that's true. the shit out of that kid. They totally know each other. So we're just gonna find the nearest Mafia base, hit it up, ask nicely where this kid is, and then we find him, and punch him, and make him pay. I'm gonna tell you right now that's a bad idea. Also, did you guys forget why you had to go to Chicago in the first place? 
It completely is. Something with our uh, parents? Joseph doesn't remember really. He didn't listen. Yeah, was it something was it something more specific than that? Because it's been over a week since we played and I don't remember if it was something more specific. Also than Joseph that. just isn't half hardly to Hermes, so he just didn't really understand what they what should be doing here. I think it was something about going to a hotel. Yeah, the Hermes booked hotel rooms for you kids. And he said they might be limited too, for the record. Well, and I'm going to the hotel. Hotel. Ah, oh, sure. Can't let little girl walk all by herself. One eyed open, old man. One eyed open. He just smiles and pets her again. Uh, arriving at the hotel, at the door, there is a large Scandinavian man waiting for you. He's, um. He's like a seven foot tall guy with, um. A blonde mohawk that is like slicked over and combed. You think it's only a mohawk because like half of like his head can't grow hair, possibly because of like a war injury. It looks like uh, he's wearing a brown, plain, not really fitting business suit, and he's holding up a, a sign that says uh, Hermes, and then quickly <laughs> scrawled underneath it Conrad in a completely different marker. It's written crayon. And he kind of, he, he's like holding this above his like seven foot tall self. And he's like waving at you and smiling. Hey! Hey! Hello! Hey, hello! Joseph walks up to him and looks him in the eyes. So what's your deal? You, you are friends of uh, the Hermes guy, yes? I wouldn't say You mean the douchebag? Oh, it's okay. He broke into my apartment and explained everything. Why, well, yes, we are fellow bureaucrats. <laughs> yeah, so you say, meet you here, and then we, we help find people. Yes? Right, find my monkey dad or something. Do you like sign? I made myself. Yes, yeah, a nice sign. Oh, thank you. Is that crayon? You're welcome. Well, well, wax, wax. Yes. It, it was what I could find. <laughs> Loving this. Expression is one of my virtues, I'll have you know. <laughs> so, so, what can you do for us exactly? Oh, I know lots of things about town. I can tell you all about town. Where to go, who to find, places that will give us discounts. Do you know somebody named Cheng Lao? Cheng Long. Cheng Lao. Uh, the, the, the character is in the journal, for the record. Other character. Oh, it is. Do, do I know all of this? Uh, for the record, no, you don't know who Chen Lu is. Oh, okay. You might have heard who Shen Lu is, only because he's like Don, but don't really know much about him. Did you say does he know Shen Lu or Shang Lu? Shang Lu. Does he know where? Does he know where sailors hang out? <laughs> the hotel, or do you take some more time to kind of explain the situation to uh, Mateus? Is there food in the hotel? I don't know, you haven't gone in yet. Well, I'm gonna I, take I head into the hotel immediately, head straight for my room. Yeah, I, I, I get back for you. And Matthias, like, um, helps everybody with, like, whatever luggage they have, and, like, carries all of it. Alright, they're in the hotel, you're immediately caught off guard by the fanciness of everything, especially some with some of the other places you've dealt with. Everything- I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you're probably Alexis not. Alexis isn't here, so... Joseph doesn't care. One bit. At the front desk, there's the bellboy and a sharply dressed black male. He wears a suit so fine you doubt there could even be a single loose thread on there, and he completes the package with a perfectly fitting hat and cane. He sees you enter and smiles. Ah, hello there, friends. Come to book a room, I hope? Meow, meow. That means yes. Do you have your tiger out again? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's let Antonio do this business interaction. I feel like that would be a bad idea. Do you want to let the angry Irish person do this? Yeah, Matthias is like holding all of these suitcases in like a <laughs> comical fashion. So like, like he can't see over them. He's probably holding a backpack for Shu because she kind of left the house in a hurry. Due to a certain... Someone. The, the backpack is, like, piled up on top of, like, seven suitcases. 
that he's just kind of balancing. I have like two different suitcases, one just full of all my clothes and everything, and the other just full of all my embalming shit. <laughs> Joseph also only has a backpack and he prefers to carry it himself. Oh, sure. We're gonna book a room, I guess. Hermes said that there might be rooms booked already for you oh, guys. Wait. Yeah, Lewis asks if there were any rooms booked by a certain age. Oh uh, yes, I do believe a man booked a number of rooms on name Hermes. A few are still available if you wish to take them. Sounds good. Room service is on that Hermes guy, right? Of course. Alexis pops out from behind them, yeah, shouts, woo. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> All right, well, you have your hotel rooms. What do you want to do for the rest of the day before retiring? Alexis drinks. She was playing go check out the city. Yeah, M- Matthias will, like, stubbornly refuse any help from the bellboys <laughs> and bring everybody's uh, luggage up to them, to their rooms. And, like, Put them all down and make sure everyone's got them. Whew! That was good workout. Up, up, c- care- careful with that bag. There's, there's some valuable stuff in oh, there. Oh, Sorry, oh. Just... Alexis doesn't actually have yeah. any bags. Everything she, she only owns what she's wearing. So you all want to retire for the night, or do you want? I can take tour of city. I actually have a question. How high up are we? Ah, uh, the hotel's about three floors. So I can't jump out of the window here. No, you can't jump out the window. God damn it. Why would you want to? You can use the stairs like a human being. Living on the edge. just for reason, Grass. Well, I mean, considering I'm... her dad. I mean, it's a nice hotel. You could even use an elevator, probably. Oh man, I ran the elevator the shit out of that. <laughs> Very good. She spends most of her dad most of her time just riding up and down on it and pressing every single button. Ah, youth. Is good. Ah, kids these days. Impressed by everything so quickly. Alexis kind of wandered off somewhere to get something to drink. And... You just hear Shu saying in between floors, Fuck you! Man, she really reminds me of myself back then. Until Joseph laughs. <laughs> Lewis just kind of sits up in his room, continuing to study the books, and every once in a while, uh, glancing up from them to the crow, and then uh, saying a name, and seeing if the crow will nod or shake its head. What about Steve? The crow shakes its head, no. Okay, not Steve, then. He's trying to pick a name for the crow. Oh, okay. <laughs> is, this, is this a fashion montage of naming? <laughs> How about Nevermore? The crow packs Joseph for that. How about Edgy McEdge, Lord? How about it's called a crow? Ding. How about Joseph Crowford? The crow packs Joseph for that. Joseph still doesn't feel anything. <laughs> no, he doesn't, but it's funny. I, I heard from from Hermes that lots of pets, but did not expect these pets. Please don't ask the name of the tiger. Please. No one beats Brigadier. The door opens up where she is. My dad gave me a lightning unicorn, and then it goes down. <laughs> Grass Slam. It's at this yes. point, the uh, the young male uh, that uh, you guys met earlier kindly asked you to stop riding the elevator. <laughs> Bullshit. Fine. Go walk up the stairs and do boring things. God. <laughs> These people, they don't want to have fun. <laughs> Shu is definitely her do- the daughter of Shlam Wukong. Joseph looks at Matthias. It's been a long day, a long train hide. I want to relax. Do you know any bars where you can start a, a fight? Hmm. Matthias thinks about it a little bit. I have perfect plan. <laughs> Joseph just grins. Oh, I hope you do. <laughs> and, uh... He tries to recall a location of a speakeasy in Capone territory. Oh. <laughs> Already making Capone angry this quickly, alright. By coincidence, that is whatever speakeasy, that is where Alexis ended up. Uh, I guess, uh, roll strength plus brawl to just see how your bar fight goes, because I'm, I'm not going to make this an encounter. Like, okay, both of us, or just me? Yeah, both of you. 
Well, I'm assuming Mateus is gonna join in. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, I'm coming. I'm not joining the fight. I'm just gonna watch. <laughs> Matthias appreciates that. Also buying some drinks for Brigadier. He's thirsty. Wow. Wait, how do you have ten die? Do you have like five strength and five he brawl? He has five in brawl. Okay. Yup. Yup. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, do I meet the difficulty you have for this, or should I re-roll that? I mean, I'm not gonna kill you. Right? No, but like, like, how well would Joseph perform with that roll? Uh, well, you would lose, but Mateus would probably save uh, you. Well, then I'm gonna re-roll that. All right. And you know what? You can make it a legendary. Deal. No, I'm gonna use another willpower to give cure to that roll. Is it really courage or just being foolhardy? Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Man, this is just not Joseph's day! You're lucky Mateus is here, gee! I mean, he probably doesn't win, but in his armor he probably doesn't take any damage either. <laughs> it's it's like this stalemate where he can hit them, but they can't damage him. So, I like to imagine this as um, Mateus purposefully taking him to an enemy gang-controlled bar. Just uh, so he can start a fight, and then Matthias can save him. Just to say that, oh, I was, I was an innocent bystander <laughs> trying to to help these people and break it up, uh, so that he can claim he could feign innocence while still damaging their gang. Well, afterwards, Joseph, him, that was a good fight. Not my best performance. You take many punch, friend. You don't know the half of it. <laughs> I, I like you, and he a clap on the shoulder. Uh, 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 uh. He uh, gives you a friendly headbutt. <laughs> he headbutts back. It's almost like I'm back at the front again. Oh, you fought in war too? Yes, you too. Mm. Those were the times, right? Mm. Rough times were. Rough times. Yeah, seen some nasty injuries, but it was a good fight for a good mm. cause. Yeah, I could not go back home after the war, so I immigrated to this world. Yeah, so what do you do for a living? Ah, much same. Crack skulls, break kneecaps, lift heavy things. Honest work, really. Oh, so you're a police officer. I am on the side of the law, yes. Joseph just laughs. Wrestle! Wrestle! <laughs> Come on! Meow, meow. Alright, fine. We should go before cops come. I really should. Super dragon. <laughs> so, after our adventures in bar busting, what happens? Oh, well, do you all retire for the night? Alexis is so somewhere drinking. She was probably exploring the city. Yeah, like Esmeralda is probably in her room petting her giant ass dog. <laughs> I think Antonio's probably just gonna walk down the street dancing to some invisible beat that no one else can hear. Dancing to the sad mini trumpets. Yep, dancing to those sad mini trumpets. Uh, Lewis eventually starts digging through all sorts of various, like, reference materials that he has due to, like, being in this hotel. And he eventually uh, keeps asking names of the bird and hits on some old, like, Latin words, and the bird thinks Corvus is a good name. The bird is now Corvus. Yay. Birdvis. Still think Nevermore would have been a good name. No. So, so I think we all went after the night at one point. Yeah, I'm assuming all of you go to bed eventually. Go to bed, pass out. I mean, Alexis goes to sleep in somebody's bed. Joseph doesn't sleep. He can stay up for a couple of days. Well, you can, but... He just calls room service from time to time. Get some alcohol, get something to eat. I don't think you'll get alcohol from room service. Yeah, you don't get alcohol from room service. Anyway, during the night, Shu Song will hear a noise. Oh man, I look around the room. Alright, well, despite the pitch darkness that is your room, you see something. 
to find something. Can't really make it out, but it looks like a person. Like on the, I turn on the, the light. Oh, it's a body. Oh, well, shit. What kind of body? That's a dead one. <laughs> I mean, what do they look like? Uh, kind of a middle-aged man, like in his thirties, close to forties. Okay. First important thing. I take his wallet. First important thing, huh? <laughs> well, he probably has some sort of ID on him and cash. Oh. What is your nature, out of curiosity? Trickster. Okay, it checks out. <laughs> <laughs> it, he actually does have an ID on him. His name is Alex Brody. Huh. A Brody. She probably calls up whoever still awake and like, Uh, guys! Guys! I have a problem in here. Does Siri just go to their rooms? Yeah, would I be in the hotel, or would I... Oh, no, you would be in the hotel. You would have a room. I would? Okay. I swear to God, guys, I did not kill the man who's dead in my room right now. Why? What's going on? Ooh, a body. <laughs> Matthias walks in, like, a little bit late and goes, Ugh. Really? So young to start killing people? Listen, man. I... All right, look, let me make a call and I'll find somebody who can take care of this. Don't worry. I'll go get my embalming kit. Joseph. Oh, that's good. That'll like, help. Oh, come on, kid. I know you're probably scared of the dark, but really? Okay, listen, old man. First off, no, I'm not afraid of the dark. Second of all, I only bring people's kneecaps and maybe their faces and maybe their legs and arms. But oh, you get the point, all right? Did you try poking him with a stick? Maybe he's still alive. She pokes at him with a stick. Oh no, staff. He's, he's dead. Yeah, Joseph confirms this guy is very well, much dead. Well, Joseph and Esmeralda would be able to tell he's dead. I don't know, I'm sticking with the stick method. Alexis kind of wanders in and is like, what's going on here? Is it a party? She's extra drunk again. Good. Poke, poke. Yeah. He's dead. Alright. <laughs> okay, so I have a skill... Where I can spend a legend point to make a roll to know what happened in a crime scene. Can I use that to know how this guy died? Uh, instant investigator. Oh, okay. I have that too. I have that too. Uh, question. Yes. How do ghosts work? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. That's, that's, a, that's <laughs> something that we have been investigating for years and years. Especially also, magnets. in the meantime, can you define magnets and how they work? <laughs> What about double ghosts? How do they work? I I'm asking because my sunglasses can see ghosts. Oh yeah, I can also just uh, see ghosts too, I think, with one of my abilities. I don't think in this case... Death senses. Yeah. I need to check what death senses actually do. Hold on. I- no. It even is a ghost. Well, a ghost is a dead person. For the last ten years, you've asked yourself, who is Ghostwick? No, I haven't. Also, I take the money out of the wallet. I think we have a very important question here, and that is, when were ghosts existed? <laughs> 1820s. Okay, then this checks out. For years you've been asking, is that John Galt a ghost? Also, I, I don't think a go this dude would be a ghost right now. No. But, I mean, best sense is combined with, like, instant investigator. Yeah, you'd be able to, like, Tell things about exactly what's yeah. happened. Yeah, in it's an investigator that's a legend point, and then wits plus investigation. Mm -hmm. So who's doing it? Well, I mean, who has the best skill? I have, I have three. Uh, combined, I have six plus two uh, automatic successes. Same here, exactly. Wow. But you can use that, and then I can talk to his ghosts. Don't think that's how death senses work. I'd have seven plus two. Well, then you you got the best one. Yeah, but the oh wait, you do have instant investigator. Okay, yeah. I have a stick. I'm drunk. <laughs> Alexis is kind of drinking. Okay, then I'm gonna activate instant investigator. Roll a uh, what's awareness? It's wits investigation. Oh, wits investigation. Yeah. Oh, nice. I know the shit. What's going on here? Alright, well, uh, just from a cursory glance, uh, the person was shot in the head, though looking at the floor there's very minimal blood. The window is open, but shows no sign of being forced, 
and there seems to be no sign of forced entry into the room. The door was still locked when Shu Song awoke. Yeah, that's a good question. How did he get in the room in the first place? Uh, the body still seems warm, and the blood is still fresh, which implies that the body was recently killed and dumped here. Joseph looks out the window, down to the street. Well, wouldn't it be from the building across? Can he see blood? Is there a building across the street, and is it, like, taller than the building we're in? Not taller, but there that is. That still would explain, like, even if this guy was sniped, it wouldn't explain how he was in the room at all. One thing at a time. <laughs> Hermes has the power to get into my apartment without, uh, showing signs of forced entry, so... So Hermes thought it was a good idea, or... I immediately suspect Hermes. Well, like, Joseph still looks out of the window down the street. Can he see blood on the street? On the street, no. Um, I'm trying to think of something to use, like, a perception roll to do. Well, do you... Albus um, still has, like, instant investigator going. Is there any other questions you have? Okay, the guy who was shot at the check the room. Hmm, can I tell... See, somebody can just... He didn't just fall down here, he... There must be any signs where somebody would have standed and then just dropped him. Yeah. Ooh, does this guy appear to have any relics on him? No, he does not. Do I see footprints? Do I see, like, a hair? Do I see, I don't know, a fingernail? Not really. This person, or persons... In fact, it says, yeah, the two people basically committed this crime. It was two persons. I swear to God, it's not me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's only one of you. It, it's okay, I know a good lawyer. You'll be perfectly fine. Uh, so, again, I look out on the street. Can I see anything down below on the wall of the hotel? Anything? No, not really. I check the window. Do I, Is the lock somehow open? Oh, the... Not differently, no, it looks like the window was open from the inside. Hmm, it's open. And there is blood on the window. Where on the window? Like on the, oh god, what's it's called, the, um... Oh, like the, um... Uh... The still. Yes, the, that's it, The yes. still, the window still. Okay. Like he was kind of dragged over it. Oh, dragged into the room. Yes. Well, if it was dragged into the room, there must still be some thing left that the, one of the culprits must... that points to one of the culprits uh, something that we didn't notice leave behind. Like, you always lose hair, you always drop, like, sweat, especially if you drag something. Must have lost something. I look around the room again. Ah, uh, well, you can... looking at the, um, bullet hole, you can tell this, uh... The hole was made from the bullet of your standard uh, police-issued pistol. Okay, I have a question, and this is a good question for our mortician friend, and also you, GM, oh, yes. Is the bullet still in him? Uh, yes. It's very deep in his skull. Get that out. I think I know what you're going to do, and I'm not sure if the bullet will work for that. Yeah, before we cut this dude open, what do you want to do? Uh, you're right, it wouldn't work for that. Damn. I thought this had to be something they owned. No, they had to have made it. So unless this person made their own bullets, it won't work. Oh, it's at this point that you hear sirens. Shit, we gotta hide the body. That, that's, that's the sign that we have to go. We should go. Joseph jumps out the window. <laughs> well, nice knowing you. Uh, Alexis picks up the body and tries to hide it under the bed. <laughs> Don't hey, have fun with you that. don't I'm you leaving. don't need to touch the body. Let's just go. I take his wallet and take any money he has on him. That's this is how I get rid of drugs. I... Alexis then drags the body into the bathroom and is trying to flush it down the toilet. <laughs> Please, no. You <laughs> let let a professional handle wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. I have an idea. So I'm assuming the police are coming and we don't have enough time. Oh yeah. So she gets into her her school uniform and starts fake crying. Alexis. Um, because obviously, Alexis uses her magic dress that can change like shape and turns it into a police uniform. Alexis pulls out her magic <laughs> dress. 
do is just selling those fake tears. Okay, uh... Well, first off, uh, Grass Slam, make me a... Manipulation... Probably art acting. Yeah. This is going to end well. Probably not. So, how many of you are actually trying to, like, leave the crime scene? Yo. Oh, dear. Well, <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Well, when a few of you leave the room like normal people rather than jumping out the window, you see an officer in uniform. He's a type of cop that you probably wouldn't trust to watch your dog, but would probably arrest you and give you a lecture on everything you did wrong, and give you the, act, the exact stature of the law. Ah. Uh, Alexis. And this guy's the only cop out no, here, No, he though. has a couple, like, people with him. Like, you know. Alexis leaves the room in her police uniform that she, her dress turned into. He is, and he is actually with, uh... The person you met earlier from the hotel who uh, talked to you when you came in. Alexis did not come in with them, so she did not meet him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Joseph just casually walks back into the hotel after he jumped out the window. Pretends that he doesn't know what the commotion is about. Well, they're not exactly trying to keep their conversation low-key, so you can catch the tail end of it. Alright, it's not much, but thanks for the information, Claude. You can head to your room now. <laughs> the police officer enters your hotel room, sees you, and anyone who's, like, around the, uh, uh, room, he says, uh, Alright, you all, I need you to clear out. Don't need any of you mucking about in the crime scene. Yes, sir. Okay. Wait. Yes, yes sir, officer. Right. You. And he points at Shu. Yes? Please don't leave the state. It would be inconvenient for us if a dodgy suspect got off scot-free. You'll be need tomorrow. But, but, what, you think I'm not American citizen? What? what? Alexis kind of walks and says, don't worry, I'll escort her. Who are you? A police officer. Make me manipulation, uh, acting. Could I use appearance? Uh, probably. I mean, I'm mostly trying trying to look like a cop. Alright, well, roll it. Is that enough for him to make me- to make him think I'm a cop? Yes, actually. Alright, fine. Just make sure she doesn't go anywhere. Will do. I, I kind of bleed shoot to the elevator and take it down with her. God. That I, racist asshole. I think Matthias just kind of whistles and strolls his way out with as his soon as the elevator closed Alexis kind of slumps over and her dragonness catches up to her I mean seriously seriously that guy's a jerk I think it's more like you found a body in your room unless <laughs> I mean, any it's okay other to reason be a killer, but we should probably get out of here <laughs> I did not kill him it's okay didn't even get to embalm the body it, it's okay. I killed lots of people in the war. I didn't kill anyone! The most important thing is we find somewhere to wait out the night. Or you could try to find out who actually killed him. Do we have anything to go on, though? Well, we should at least find somewhere to figure out what to do. He, you know he wasn't killed that far away. Alright, then, Joseph, since he's already out, got the area. She kind of just grumbles, slumps her bag over her shoulder, and puts on her normal clothing because obviously this schoolgirl thing did not work out well. Alexis is going to wait to change out of her cop uniform until she's away from the hotel. At least she has her post staff. So where are you guys going? Good question, where can we go? Joseph just squats the general area around the hotel, see if he can find something. Well, right next to the hotel, there is kind of a small convenience store. Not right next, but you know what I mean. Also, how much money did I get from stealing that guy's wallet? Don't know, like two dollars? I'm going to the convenience store. Is it still open? Yeah. Anything worth noting in it? There's a guy at the cashier. Ooh! Hey, I need some smokes. Joseph walks up to him. You notice some things around here? Not really out of the usual. This guy is... Very tired. You saw something out in the streets tonight. Maybe just half an hour ago. 
Now I'll let you mention it, I did hear a gunshot that was kind of closer by than usual. I mean, you know, it's Chicago, so you kind of learn to block that stuff out. Oh, do you know where exactly it came from? Uh, I think, like, if I had to guess, like, behind the, uh, um, rundown, uh, old liquor store next door. Well, thank you very much, good sir. And Joseph leaves five dollars on the counter. What exactly are you asking this for, anyway? Uh, Joseph McQuillan, private investigator. Gotcha. You don't need to know more. Also, she slaps down two dollars and puts down a moon pie. Meantime, Joseph goes out, and I assume everyone is outside the hotel now, except the two who are in the store. What's going on? So Joseph looks to Louis, Esmeralda, and Matthias. The only people who f- he thinks can kind of understand what's going on. Uh, right. Cashier said he heard something behind the one down liquor store there. Check that out. Do I know anything about this liquor store? Not really, like... He said he heard a gunshot, and you know this, like, isn't, like, usually a place where... Uh, uh, this isn't a heavy activity area. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that, but it's not, like, a place where, you know, like, uh, mobsters would execute rats. Hmm. Worth investigating, I think. Let's go. Matthias cracks his knuckles. He does that a lot. Uh, Joseph gently pats the axe he has hidden under his trench coat on his back. <laughs> Shooting doubles on our moon pie. So, can we go behind the store? Where probably, if there was still the murderer, he's probably gone by now. And Joseph just walks behind the rundown store. Alright, um, you know there's kind of a lot of trash built up behind here. Which is odd, considering there's a working incinerator actually nearby. Now we know what they're incinerating. Well, if they were incinerating stuff, why was the guy in the room? So, do we notice anything unusual? Uh, rolling perception, awareness. Do I still have instant investigator active? No, that happens. I think it's once per scene. It doesn't really say, so I'm gonna say it's just that scene. I mean, you do have two other people with it that could activate it. You could also it. just roll perception, awareness. Sure. Okay, we'll do it the boring way. What? <laughs> I don't know shit, apparently. Well, I didn't bodge. There's that. I don't know shit. Actually, so far everyone except Lewis has gotten it. He's busy reading. I don't know, I'm not paying attention. Does Lewis's crow notice what's going on? <laughs> Hold on, is that one of the skills my crow can do? Probably. Let me look. Yeah, he does have awareness. Do it. Make your bird look at things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did better than me. So your brother also <laughs> knows what's going on. Yeah, so your attention immediately directs to the pile of trash. It reeks, mind you. And digging through, you can see why. That's a not dead body. No, but moving the garbage is a hassle because it's sticking to the ground because of the blood. A large amount of it, I might say. Yeah, the blood's fine, but why does it gotta stink? Pew. I'm guessing the blood looks very fresh. Yes, actually. Is there a blood trail leading to the trash? Uh, no, because it looks like, uh... There's a bit of dripping, like, drips, like, kind of away from the pool that you just are noticing now. It don't go very far, but it almost looks like he was carried. Hmm. Or perhaps wandered over here and then fell into the trash, died. (laughs) Yeah, he fell into the trash and lost all this blood. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I would too if I had been shot and then wandered into the trash. Actually, I have a question. Is the front door open? Door for what? The place we're at? No, it is long since barred I can off. make it open. Yeah, can I kick it open? Oh, you don't need to because it's at this point I need everyone to roll perception awareness again. 
I think I want to re-roll that. Oh, the two. <laughs> yeah, two. And my bird got a five. <laughs> Good job, birdie bird. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Esmeralda and Corvus. Uh, can I re-roll mine if I we didn't? You, you really don't need to. It's not a surprise attack. Uh, yeah, uh, Esmeralda and Corvus noticed you guys are being watched. I would imagine the, the bird just kind of paused to signify that. Sure. Sounds about right. Corvus is a bird after all. What is that, Corvus? Little Jimmy fell down the well? I think he's trying to say that we're being watched. You do indeed notice that a slightly older looking woman is watching your every move. Upon being noticed, however, she tries to make a break for it. After her. So, what did they roll to catch her? Strength plus athletics. Wouldn't it be dexterity athletics? Um, actually, yeah, yeah, I can, dexterity athletics. I can take a page from the payday book and uh, make this a little easier for us. Oh. Okay, how? I can use overt order and just yell, ON THE GROUND! Can she hear you, do? She's nearby, right? Nearby enough that fucking you could attempt to grab her, right? So you do that? Yeah. And you're yelling on the ground? Yeah, get on the ground. Payday style? Gotcha. Yeah. Alright, she... Eat that dirt. She gets on the ground with her hands up. While she's doing that, Joseph is just gonna run up, then do a backflip, and land on her. Why? When I kill okay, her? Okay, roll me a... I guess roll me a clinch. Uh, he doesn't try to clinch it, just sits on her. Point blank landing after the flip. I mean, she's already like on the ground. I guess I just don't... okay. Um, it's a one dot stunt. Cool, and I can regenerate one of my legends. Also, welcome back, Compy Freak. How much did you? Uh, something about back flipping. Yeah, Jeff is flipping to her. Okay, go ahead and flip on the old woman. She's not old. She's like in her thirties. All right, dexterity athletics, I guess. All right, you're sitting on her now. Good job. And it was at that point where her spine breaks. No, trust me. No, no. <laughs> Joseph is trying to land very carefully to not hurt her. Trust me, you can hurt her even if you. With this, even if you wanted to. Alright, so who is it? Well, you've never seen her before. She's a, like I said, a slightly older Hispanic woman. Alexis asked for her name. She kind of is actually having trouble talking with this guy on her back. Uh, hmm. Fine, Joseph stands up but still pins her down with, with his foot. You know, I wasn't planning on going anywhere after your friend told me to get down. You have to make sure. My name is Isabella. Why were you watching us? You seem to have some relation to the body my friends placed in your friend's hotel room. I'm very sorry about that, by the way. If we had known you were Scions, we wouldn't have done that. So I take it. I, so I take oh, it you're a okay. Scion as well, then. Mm-hmm. Daughter of Quetzalcoatl. So why did you exactly dump a body in uh, that little girl's room? I'm 16! Well, we need somebody to pin on. And why did you murder that guy? I figured it'd be obvious. He was a mortal fallen under the swung song of the Titans. Disposing of him was an obvious choice. Wait, what's a Titan? Uh, Hermes kind of about those... Like how the gods are well with him, I think. He didn't really go into detail. She just kind of pokes at the lady's head. Obviously, she's a little pissed off about this whole thing of surprise corpse. Surprise corpse! I hate corp. playing surprise corpse. I love playing surprise corpse. I need to write this down. Maybe I can pitch a movie called Surprise Corpse. <laughs> <laughs> Only if I get to star in it. She then furiously pokes at her head even more. But yeah, she she honestly didn't... <laughs> she's telling the truth. Like, if they had known you guys were scions, they wouldn't have dumped the body in there. So, and where are your friends right now? 
I believe some of them are rummaging through the dead man's house. She pokes harder by numbing on her moon pie. She's obviously not even not even <laughs> happy at all. With the moon pie? No, the both staff. Oh, okay. I thought you said the moon pie. Poking her with the moon pie, which is on the end of her bow staff. <laughs> no, that's a waste of two dollars she stole. It's a pie in the face. Moon pie. Oh, when... the moon pie could have eaten that. I'm still hungry, we never ate. She put the bow staff in her eye. Why? It's just like poking at it. Well, obviously, would you not be happy to have a surprise corpse in your room? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Making the decision to dump it on you was the best decision I've made. <laughs> ah, stop it, little girl. She pokes at Grandpa. And then just glares at him while poking. He still doesn't notice it. <laughs> so... I can see why you wouldn't think we were Scion. <laughs> so wait, are you... good guy or bad guy? I'm not sure how to answer the question. Okay, other question. Do you know where God is? Have you met God? No, because that's what our mission is, too. We were also met with Hermes. Well, I guess we're on the same side. Alexis just then says, shrugs and starts drinking again. So if we're on the same side, why don't you lead us to your friends? So we can discuss a few things. Gladly. Why did you let me go? Sure. Yeah, and he takes his foot off her back. Alright, and she leads you to the house. Alright, yeah, she says how everyone except a couple people were visited by Hermes the night before. A couple people are kind of also added to the band, like uh, Mateus was. Since some people were in Chicago and some were in New York. She, in particular, was in New York. But eventually you guys reach the house. It's a very broken down, almost shack-like home. You wonder how anyone could possibly live there. If you didn't know better, you'd think that ghosts are the only beings that could possibly inhabit this location. Though considering your run-ins with the supernatural, maybe this isn't too far off. Entering the the abode, it isn't much better. What does get your attention, however, is when the officer you met earlier is staring you down with the point of a rather intimidating-looking spear. He seems concerned, but relaxes when he sees that Isabella is with you. Uh. Alright, Isabella, would you mind explaining why you brought these chancers here? Because we're on the same freaking side, dumbass. Excuse me, did I ask you? No? Then shut your gob! Stupid police officer. Isabella explains that you all are signs as well, and have the same mission of finding the perpetrator behind the god finding missing. He lowers the spear. Hi. Oh, they're bloody scions, are they? Fantastic! Just more competition to gain their good graces. You wanna take this outside? We can take this outside. Oh, trust me, I would rather not fight anyone. Yeah, I have a confession to make. I'm not actually a cop. <laughs> you could have told me. You're, you're not? <laughs> now I need something to drink. Well, Lou says that's a good line. I'm writing that one down. Looking behind the detective, you see a few more familiar faces, or well, one I should say. Uh, it's the black gentleman you met earlier today at the hotel. Mm-hmm. Huh, so everyone is involved to try to blame this on us, aren't they? But, well, if we had known you were Scions, trust me, we would not have done that. And Lewis just pipes up and goes, Yeah, but he knew who booked the rooms. Except I wasn't involved in the murder, I can tell you that. It then just dawns on her that they went into a room of a 16-year-old girl. They didn't know who was in there, they just dumped the body and left. How did you do that, by the way? Couldn't find any signs of entry. Oh, I can walk through walls! So wait, they dumped a dead guy in a room without asking the guy in the party who knows whose rooms are whose? Yeah! That sounds like something <laughs> we would do! <laughs> <laughs> so wait... So when, since you can walk through walls... Let me guess, you walked 
through the wall, opened the window so they could climb or fly in and dump the body, and then you two left again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm honestly willing to believe that they didn't ask the guy who knew. Oh what yeah, they didn't <laughs> ask Claude at all. Well, my name's pretty Callahan for what it's worth. Cool. Wait, do I know this guy? He's a police officer, so you might. Oh, maybe. And the other gentleman introduces himself as Claude Armistead, and the other man there introduces himself as Jackie Raptus. Yeah, uh, Katie is still kind of looking at the spear. This here is, well, fascinating. As far as I can tell, its power seems to have been drained, but this seems to be the Luen of Keltichar. But the question is, why in the bloody hell was it doing in some mortal's run-down home? Hmm. Maybe he stole it. Joseph just thinks really hard to see if he knows about this, like, he kind of, name kind of rings a bell, but he's not sure. I mean, it's a Irish uh, mythologi- mythological relic. I mean, I, as a player, know that, but if Joseph knows, that is the other question. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Uh, roll me intelligence occult. Okay. Okay, so I... Uh, Joseph does know about the spear. <laughs> so what's up with sunglasses, dude? Oh, that is Jackie Raptus. And Jackie Raptus was... Who is... Well, you've just met him today. This is the first time you're meeting him. But yeah, it's at this point that, uh... Jackie speaks up and tells Brady that he found a scrap of paper that seems like it's a date and address. But, uh, since I kind of haven't described Jackie, uh, let me do that right now. Um, alright, uh, Jackie is dressed casually, but still gives an air of, this man is very rich. He has slicked back dark hair and a perfect complexion. Somehow, even if this guy was planning to kill you, you just couldn't hate him for it. I don't like him already. So if you found an address at the time, we should probably check that place out, shouldn't we? Yeah, we'll go there and we'll kill whatever we find. Maybe we'll even find one of our parents, who the hell knows? Hey, if you see some guy who looks like a monkey, can you punch him in the dick for me? <laughs> Though, after sailing silent for a bit, Claude speaks up. Uh, if I may, there's really no point in all 14 of us going to the destination. One group could go to the location, and the other can try to contact Hermes and perhaps get that artifact in his possession. Wait, 14? There's seven of us in our band, yes. You've met four, I believe. I'm just gonna... Hmm. Do you know anybody named, uh, Cheng Liu? Uh, the name does sound familiar. Isn't he the kid of, uh... Mafia Don in New York? Yeah. Right, my father has associates in New York, and he's run into them farther more than he can count. If you're asking where he is, I can't say I can tell you. He said he's taking a train here. Yeah, we met him, said one to take a train to Chicago. Okay. We just didn't know if he was with you or something. Listen, I'm just going to be brutally honest here. I just want to go kick his ass. Same here, I... Right. That shitty brat deserves a beating of his life. But yeah, when they say somebody should get in contact with them, it's just... You found it, so you should have the honor of contacting... Hermes. And he tries to sound as angry as possible when he says Hermes' name. Fair enough. Alright, well, you both have your missions now. This band will try to contact Hermes, and you guys will try to figure out who or what this mortal is meeting. Let me guess you won't find this out till next time. I mean, I was, I was about to ask, do you guys want to keep going, or...? Now seems like as good a time to wrap it up as any. Yeah. I mean, I could keep going, but if people want to stop, we don't have to. So. I can keep on going. Well, like I said, if you guys want to oh, hmm. Honestly, I think we should stop because 
this next one is going to probably take a while. Oh, right. sounds good. Oh, great. Then yep. I know what you probably have in store for us. Couldn't possibly be a fight, could it? Well, I love the chase till the 